नमस्कार एंड वेलकम बैक टू स्टडी आई क्यू टूडे वी आर गोट कंक्लूड आर डिस्कशन फॉर मेन्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स फ्रॉम साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी आर डिस्कशन टूडे इज कनेक्टेड विथ डिफेंस Now, when we look at defense and defense-related technologies from prelims point of view, aspirants have to focus more and more on factual information like what kind of missiles are we developing, what are the new arms and ammunitions that DRDO is developing, other institutions are developing. Many a times, MCQs can be set up on those. But when we look at mains, question in mains related to defense have been quite generic, connected with indigenization of defense production of India. Apart from that, sometimes questions might emerge from current affairs-based defense technology. For instance, a few years back, there was a specific question which asked you about the missile defense system called S-400 because that was in news. But such questions, I wouldn't say, have a, a very high scope of repeatability. So, in general, when we talk about defense, let's try to address one particular question here. Why does India import large defense equipment even after 75 years of independence? We'll talk about this and we'll also understand how things are improving. Meaning, what are the steps that the government has taken in the last few years to ensure that there is indigenous production of arms and ammunition and defense related products in India? Now, to answer to this question, why do we import so much of defense related equipment? See, why do we have to import first of all? Because we have defense needs. You need to understand our needs are quite high. Now to answer this question, sir, why India needs so much of defense? See, we talk about any country's sovereignty. It depends on safeguarding itself. One of the core tenets of India's national interest would be ensuring its territorial integrity, ensuring its sovereignty, ensuring its unity. And for that, we need, we need defense, we need arms and ammunition to protect ourselves. And to protect from whom? When we look at the situation in South Asia, to maintain our territorial integrity, we have some threats. One from the northwestern side and one from, I would say, the northern side. There are two adversaries which India has. One is China and another one is Pakistan. Now, because of these two adversarial relations that we have with these countries, we, are, we have to continuously upgrade our defense requirements. That's the basic understanding. And you will also get to know that if you look at India's defense requirements or I can say uh, India's import, I can clear cut highlight one particular year that is 1962 after which our defense related needs have grown manifold or defense imports have grown manifold because during this time from I would say 1947 or 1950 our defense needs they were slowly and steadily increasing but after 1962 they have leapfrogged and today the defense related imports are quite high. I am not telling it is just because of Pakistan and China. Yes, because of relations with these two countries, because of volatile borders that we have, because of so many other uh, external security related issues as well as internal security related issues, we have to spend more and more on our security. And these days when we talk about say 21st century, newer challenges are emerging. That means we have to keep ourselves updated and that is why we import lot of defense equipment. Now, if we talk about India's India's track record, yes, we have followed a foreign principle, foreign policy, I would say, of non-alignment. However, in 1971, we more or less diluted it. Today, when we mention about the term non-alignment, it basically means multi-alignment. We align with multiple countries, we align with multiple groups. But since 1971, there has been a sway towards USSR, that is the current day Russia. And for our defense needs, because in 1971, we, we signed a treaty of friendship and cooperation. And basically, we, I would say to a large extent, India did come under the security blanket of USSR after 1971. But since then, we have grown manifold. Today, we talk about complete autonomy or less dependence on any other country. We, uh, we basically run our foreign policy as per our wishes. But we can clearly say from the foreign policy perspective and from security perspective, we were a little reliant on Russia. And this has continued. This has continued for almost uh, three to four decades. But after 1991, the security scenario has completely changed throughout the world because there was so much of political churning, so much of global political churning. In 1991, USSR disintegrated. So there was no guarantee of 
some sort of security from USSR. So we started our voyage of becoming independent from the from the security perspective as well. And in 21st century, what we have tried is first of all, we have tried to diversify our defense imports. Of course, even today we are heavily reliant on Russia. We must agree, but we have diversified it and we are importing now from many other players. We have also signed multiple cooperation agreements, defense-based co-production agreements. We have one with Russia. We have uh, we have an agreement with Israel. We have joint production ventures or joint production understanding with France. So, with different countries, we have diversified our imports. Apart from that, India is also focusing more and more on indigenous production of defense related products that is arms and ammunitions and all the defense related products but one thing we need to understand is in india the private sector that is the defense related private sector is still quite nascent it's not heavily developed like the united states industry the defense industry in fact us industry i would say to a large extent they run on their defense itself it has been going on for more than 100 years they do the business of war you, you do understand that so india is slowly and steadily focusing on more and more indigenous production especially uh, since i would say last two decades and in the last uh, seven to eight years many steps have been taken to reduce the number of imports and to produce more and more in india because we talk about atman nirbhar bharat we talk about make in india produce in india right if you look at our own production industry as of now large amount of arms and ammunition that we produce they are under the government domain itself we do understand there are ordnance factories and in recent times, we have restructured the Ordnance Factory Board. Yes, the Indian Ordnance Factory Organization, it primarily focuses on production of these, production of arms, ammunition, explosives. It focuses on producing weapons, vehicles, equipment, weapons like the guns that we need. It also focuses on materials and composites, armored vehicles and ordnance equipment like bullet, etc. So basically, we focus more and more on transport vehicle, personal, personal carrier, the clothing, the general store items, the armor, the uh, the bulletproof vest, etc. So we focus on such things through these ordnance factories. Apart from that, advanced advanced defense related products or advanced defense defense related uh, equipment they are also under the domain of many central public sector enterprises. I can give you so many examples. The most important one is. HAL, Hindustan Aeronautical Aeronautics, Aeronautics Limited. It is based in Bengaluru. This is responsible for many uh, defense related production which caters to the need of Air Force. Apart from that, the main research wing is DRDO, Defense Research and Development Organization. It comes under the Ministry of Defense. It not only conducts research, it all it, all, it is also involved in joint production of many equipments along with some other private companies as well. Apart from that, the Bharat Dynamics Limited, this is one of the prominent player, prominent central public sector enterprise which contributes towards defense equipments. Bharat Electronics, Bharat Earth Moors, Goa Shipyard, Mishra Dhatu Nigam. There is GRSC Garden Reach Shipbuilders which caters to the requirements of Indian Navy. Right? Apart from these central public sector enterprises, we also have many private production units which are slowly and steadily upcoming and developing in India. There are many companies like the Adani Aero Defense, Adani Aero Defense Systems and Technologies. Uh, it is quite upcoming in recent times. The Aeroloy Technologies, Ashok Leyland Defense, Brahmos Aerospace is there. Brahmos Aerospace is responsible for the production of Brahmos. And you do know that we are now into developing export deals with other countries. That means now we produce Brahmos missile for ourselves. We are now looking for exporting it, selling it to other countries as well. In fact, there was a news recently that India might be selling Brahmos to Russia as well. Apart from that, there are many companies like Bharat Forge, Dynamatic Technologies, there is Reliance Naval Shipyard and there is Paras Defense, which is doing excellent work. Paras Defense is involved in development of drones as well. There is Mahindra Defense System, Mahindra Aerospace there, LNT. LNT is working very closely with DRDO for developing many uh, advanced, many advanced equipments. Apart from that, there is Kalyani Group. Kalyani Group also has a MOU with DRDO for developing the ATACS, Advanced Stored Artillery Gun System. So what have we understood? Yes, India was reliant on other countries for defense imports. Even today, we are quite reliant. We have to agree that particular fact. But since last few decades, I would say, since last two decades, we are trying to develop more and more defense-related products in India. All right? Now, 
if you look at if you look at our reliance this is fy22 that means financial year 2022 data you can see how much reliant are we on other countries predominant defense partners of india are one is russia and we are reliant on russia even till today till last year fy2022 66 percent of india's defense it came defense related equipment it came from russia and this is according to the cipri report 2022 cipri report which shows russia 66 percent apart from that there are some other players slowly and steadily we are also we have also diversified towards united states of america france is a very important partner israel is another important partner uk is also very important partner in terms of defense and if you if you ask sir what would be the number a couple of decades back this would have been almost 90 95 percent reliant on russia but slowly and steadily we have diversified and now i would say if you ask who are the major defense partners of india top russia next is us israel france and uk top five defense partners of india all right now if you look at india from I would say 1990s in 1980s 84 we started the integrated guided missile development program which has given us a lot of success we have developed these the patna missile that is prithvi akash uh, trishul nag and agni missiles we have developed under this we have also as i told you we have diversified towards other countries we have now many co-production co-development deals with russia france israel and now we have also become we have also become very uh, important strategic defense partner of us as well there are so many examples which i can give in which uh, in which we have developed many other things i'll show you some of the examples but there is one important question that why we must indigenize now common sense tells me it is always better better to rely on myself especially for security related needs so indigenization has three broad benefits for us first one is for my own security if if i am able to provide help to myself that is self help is the best help because see even if i rely on russia no matter how close an ally or friend russia is we would be reliant on their defense equipment that means th there is a possibility that in in times of crisis say in international relations we always tell there is no friend or there is, there is no foe who is permanent there is no permanent ally there is no permanent enemy but if if in future india russia relations they become a little tumultuous then can russia can russia hamper india's security needs the answer would be yes yes so what we need to do is we need to ensure from security perspective we have to rely on ourselves apart from that it also makes it also makes a lot of sense from economic perspective we will be saving billions of dollars worth of foreign exchange we order defense equipment we pay them in dollars so we can save our foreign exchange so in terms of forex a lot of savings apart from that we will be building our own capability that means we will be relying only on our own we would we would not be dependent on others or other allies so we will be increasing our own security capability our own defense capability so from these three angles yes we have to indigenize more and more but if you look at india's defense sector we started with a question why even after 75 years we import so many things because india's defense industry defense sector has not grown accordingly according to the needs the defense industry has not grown mostly it has relied on the government government investment government companies government public sector enterprises in recent times i would say in last one to two decades or even three decades many other companies are emerging private companies have come i give you a list of that but if you look at india's defense sector one big issue is huge government control huge government control now because of this what happens is many a times when the government changes what would be their policy there is always a question of that and because of these government control and policy continuity issues we are looking at many other problems because of which we have gone into a vicious cycle for instance say i want to start my own defense company or defense industry in india there are so many issues that i face first of all i face the issue of capital imagine uh, somehow i manage somehow i manage i would like to have some government support for myself but okay if i don't get government support i manage on my own capital i would be facing land acquisition issues I would be facing problem of skilled labor in India. 
I would be facing problems of infrastructural deficit in India. Apart from that, I am facing a bigger issue of what will happen if the, if the next government, will it nationalize the entire sector? I do not know. And that is why there is a lack of entrepreneurial zeal here. So we are running through a lot of technological issues. Yes, uh, most of the defense research, again, is under the government sector. DRDO is the pioneer in that. But slowly and steadily, there are some other companies, some consulting firms who have come up now in terms of technology support. Institutional capacity is lacking. Again, we are working towards that. This entrepreneurial zeal, it's a huge problem always because if there is any issue, say for, for instance, there is a government today and the government, tomorrow the government changes. Will they continue with the same policy? If they do not continue the same policy, then the, there would be a dispute between the private, private company and the government. Then is there any dispute settlement mechanism? So we need a proper dispute settlement mechanism. Apart from that, we have so many infrastructural bottlenecks in our country. And one of the issues is this. But in recent times, slowly and steadily, the government is trying to become an enabler, very similar to how we want space technology or space-based uh, private industries to develop. We are also supporting many ventures where we are inviting private players. We have created separate uh, defense investor cells where if the private sector is involved, even if from outside any company wants to come, yes, FDI route is being opened. It is not completely 100% automatic in many areas. Nonetheless, slowly and steadily, things are improving. And that is what is the theme of today's discussion as well. Because uh, questions can come up on this. What have been some of the recent measures towards indigenization or becoming completely Swadeshi or completely Atmanirbhar in terms of defense. Things are improving. If you look at the numbers, this year, the defense production, domestic defense production, it has crossed 1 lakh crore mark for the first time ever. If you look at some of the numbers, the value of defense production in the last 4 to 5 years has been in 2017-18, it was about 55,000 crore. Again, in 2018-19, 50,000 crore. 2019 20, 20, 60, 3000 crore, 2020, 20, 88, and last year, last fiscal, it was 95. And this time it has crossed, it has crossed 1 lakh crore, 1 lakh 6800 crore worth market. That is, do domestic production has enhanced. The question is why? Again, because of the government policies, the government intervention, government trying to become enabler, government has, ha has uh, uh, pushed. MSME sector, startups, private sector, right? Different, different steps have been taken. We'll talk about that. But this is a very, very positive news. And for the first time, we have crossed, for the first time ever, we have crossed domestic defense production of more than 1 lakh crore. Apart from that, there have been so many news that have come this year. Recently, Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, unveiled Asia's largest helicopter factory in Karnataka. It is near Tumkuru. Apart from that, this year, the defense minister has announced that India is going to achieve defense equipment export target. Remember, now we have, we have achieved a landmark. We have achieved a landmark of 1 lakh crore production, defense production indigenously. And very soon, in a few years, by 2026, the government has set a target of exporting 40,000 crore worth defense equipments and defense products. And we are in advanced talks with many countries. As I told you, we produce Brahmos. Now we are we are in negotiation with uh, with Philippines. We are in negotiation with Vietnam. We are in negotiation with Egypt, Argentina. Recently with Russia as well. In fact, Argentina is very close to signing a deal with India for HL aircrafts as well. So our exports are bound to grow more and more. You can you can see here India in talks with over twelve countries for export of the Brahmos missile. Recently, I told you Argentina is going to buy indigenous. Tejas Mark 1A and the light combat helicopter Prachanda as well. And the deal is dubbed somewhere around 9,000 crore, 8,675 crore to be precise. These are the reports. Again, the, the agreement, the deal has not been finalized. Of course, you do understand with defense related news, there is always, uh, there is always uh, an enigma because we might not get complete details, complete data. But nonetheless, you get the trend. The trend here is that from last decade or so, we are looking at a lot of improvement in terms of defense production. The numbers are the numbers are quite 
uh, quite handsome in the last five to six years we have almost we have almost i would say doubled the amount of domestic defense production now question comes up sir why why a lot of steps have been taken we have first of all streamlined our defense procurement policy we are now pushing for we are we are now pushing for co production agreement co development agreement uh, co technology development technology transfer clauses in different agreements with the countries now earlier what used to happen was it was a buyer seller kind of relationship that means india buys someone sells that is not sustainable that is not sustainable so what we are looking for now is more strategic cooperation strategic agreements with our defense partners where yes we would be buying along with that we will also appreciate co production agreements joint ventures technology transfer clauses we have liberalized our fdi already we are focusing on buy indian make indian the defense acquisition council has streamlined its its processing in fact the dac itself is one of the reforms now the highest authority which will clear the defense related imports is this defense acquisition council itself there are so many examples of indigenous production joint production i can give you example of ins vikrant indigenously developed aircraft carrier tejas developed by the hal arihant submarine we have we have uh, developed the first nuclear submarine that is arihant submarine arigat is already developed arigat it's still in testing phase it would be commissioned probably next year we have project 75 with france we have developed agni we have developed dhanush right dhanush artillery has been developed by bharat dynamics limited brahmos brahmos aerospace has developed it brahmos i told you aeros brahmos aerospace is in now in uh, talks with more than 12 countries arjun tank arjun tank t90 tanks we have we have developed many defense based products and equipments and now we are looking to sell now you can see the trajectory here in defense is also very similar to space based development however i would say in defense we have not seen so much of traction like we have seen in space technology in space technology also what we did was we we started slow and steady initially we experimented then we focused more and more on national services and today today we are uh, one of the pioneer space based organization in the world itself in defense we have started now and perhaps in the coming decades i would say the next 2 to 3 decades are going to belong to india in terms of defense as well why so many reforms have come already our igmdp that is integrated guided missile development program one of the most successful aspect of this would be our agni missile agni 6 agni 6 which is an icbm intercontinental ballistic missile it is under development i it is dubbed that agni 7 is also coming soon apart from that we have a brahmos supersonic cruise missile and strategic partnership model right now brahmos is a supersonic cruise missile and brahmos aerospace has said that in the upcoming years by probably 2030 we will also turn it hypersonic defense procurement procedure was finalized in 2016 the fdi rules have been eased out import uh, import of defense items has been banned in recent 2 to 3 years 101 defense imports defense uh, items have been stopped we are not going to import them in fact we have created a positive list that means there is a positive indigenization list of 209 items that means earlier whatever we used to import will ensure that we are now going to produce them in india itself the ordnance factory board it was corporatized last year amalgamation of different ordnance factories was done and an ordnance factory board corporation was done apart from that defense acquisition council has come the post of cds has come for smooth uh, smooth working in the ministry of defense itself there is defense planning committee apart from that now we are focusing on strategic partnership model development as i told you it's not just a buyer seller relationship now we now want we now want that share or the other piece of pie now right that is why we are looking for technology transfer clauses and co production agreements apart from that the government has promoted idex idex is is a, is a is a basically a platform for innovation and, and technology development in the defense and aerospace related activities government has created a srijan portal for defense related developments there is also a defense investor cell in the mod which will help any private entity or even even a foreign company which is looking to invest in india streamlining would be done through it there is nwio naval innovation and digitalization organization which has been set up there is mission uh, raksha gyan shakti where 
IPR assistance will be provided in defense related research and development. Defense corridors are going to be built very, very soon. Two defense corridors are going to come, one in north, one in south. It is said that defense corridors are going to set up in Tamil Nadu and Uttar Pradesh. And new acquisition policy has also been approved. That is, the DAC will try to sleep, streamline defense acquisition, uh, that is, defense imports quickly based on efficiency and based on the needs of our security agencies, that is, on our defense uh, defense bodies. All right? So, uh, we are looking at so many new developments and probably, as I told you, I would say the next decade, the next two decades, they belong to India in terms of defense production and there is a huge market we are looking at more and more export avenues as well all right right so that's our discussion predominantly about defense and i would like to end this particular series the discussion with some some input some pointers for you uh, because of course i told you that i'll be winding up uh, around august 31st we are just a little delayed not an issue uh, you still have about uh, 10 11 days to go for the examination first of all all the very best from my side for the examination i always advise the students to give themselves credit have confidence as the exam comes of course aspirants do feel jittery they they have that self doubt there is one feeling which i always remember before mains somehow there is that threat always or that feeling where you feel that you don't remember anything it's a very normal feeling. Believe me, it's a very normal feeling. Uh, that's why I always tell, give credit to yourself. You have read things, you have known things, you have understood things. And in examination, you'll be able to recall as well. Just do not lose that confidence. It's very normal. It happens with everybody because if you're tense, uh, you tend to, you, you, you think that you don't remember some stuff, but it's not like that. You can, you can very easily uh, remember things in the examination if you have revised properly then it's well and good all right so all the very best from my side do well come out with flying colors do let me know how your mains was and from my side i would like to give you some pointers about other potential topics which i have not covered in this particular series because again if we discuss this i think <laughs> the mains exam would come itself uh, but i would appreciate if the aspirants go with this preparation Questions might uh, come up. As I told you, indigenization of defense production, we just discussed it. Uh, we just discussed this. Again, from export point of view also, prepare some from data. I have already given you some inputs here. One thing that I would like to focus is the space-based development and space-based contribution from uh, Indian female scientists. Now, this is something which uh, I would love to see in the examination. And a question might, might be expected on this. Uh, what has been... Uh, what has been uh, the woman contribution or woman scientist contribution towards different fields in science and technology itself, not just space per se, but other fields as well. So space, because this, this year it has been in news and uh, you do know that uh, there are many female scientists who are involved in Chandrayaan 3 team. They were involved in the Aditya L1 team as well, right? So do make a note of those things. Do make a note of uh, those scientists. Uh, and if a question appears or you can use them as an example in other answers as well apart from that try to focus on some new technology in agriculture like precision farming uh, what are the new ideas that have come up because agriculture related questions come although not exactly from science and technology but such questions do appear uh, ensure that you are aware of some new technologies new ideas keep some examples handy for answer writing apart from that lithium batteries is is one area which i feel a question might be due what is the future of lithium batteries? What do you understand by lithium batteries? And uh, because we have found out huge lithium reserves in northern part of our country. So a question I would say might be due or it, it might appear. So do prepare about the future of lithium batteries. Uh, also focus on the submersibles, right? Submersibles. What is the use of submersibles? Because uh, this year uh, the Ocean Gate submersible was in news, right? Uh, you know about Stockton Rush the unfortunate incident that happened apart from that we are also developing the niot is also developing this much 6000 6000 now this is again uh, it will go down 6000 meters so much 6000 focus on that as well uh, i wouldn't expect a direct question but something connected to submersibles might be anticipated also focus on nobel prizes 2022 right nobel prizes 2022 in fact i would advise all the aspirants to look at the nobel prizes 
winners uh, say in last three to four years because many a times i have seen questions appearing connected to nobel prize and its application or its impact on our day-to-day -day life i can give you example of many uh, say for instance there is a there is example of uh, stem cell stem question based on stem cell which received nobel prize a few years back a question on uh, pluripotent stem cells induced pluripotency right a question on that blue led nobel prize was given to development of the blue led a, a few years back i think almost a decade back the question appeared now because it has transformed in this digital era uh, the the experience of the weaving experience that we have right so ensure that you are just thorough with it there is no need to mug up stuff there is no need to take tension if you do not know about these things just give a couple of hours to at least look through these topics and prepare prepare a handout or a revision note for you say uh, maybe you, you can revise it in one hour one one and a half hours do not give too much of time if you do not know things it's very nice as i told you at the beginning of the discussion itself at the beginning of this series this series is not to overwhelm students no not to overwhelm aspirants this is simply to complement your preparation that is why you must have seen i have not gone into any of the basics right what i was doing was basically give you some inputs which you can add to your own notes so that your mains preparation is now foolproof you gain that confidence and when i'm when i'm discussing about these many of you must have made some notes at least about some of the topics which is very very good also focus on quantum computing i i wouldn't say highly technical questions would emerge but what do you understand by quantum computing or uh, what is quantum quantum key based communication what is its future what are its application what is the basic technology that is involved in this apart from that again this is a very cliched topic i would say antibiotic resistance which is evergreen uh, which is kind of evergreen because every year you get this news uh, that there is there is antibiotic resistance which is on rise in india especially uh, in in cases of uh, tuberculosis so do prepare a small note or a gist about that as well so these are some of the most important topics which uh, from my side i have to apologize that i am not covering them in the series because uh, we are already running short of time and uh, i had designed this as a 10 class series so we could have gone on discussing but it, its utility would be reduced as we go nearer to the examination because i want you to have your own time and do not disrupt your own schedule this is just to complement your preparation clear so remember these for sure all right right uh, with some concluding remarks i would say all the very best again and before i head out there is a new batch starting this is not for the main students again for anybody that you know if anybody is preparing for the examination do let them know about study iq do let them know about study iq's p2i initiative because this is the most comprehensive program where we will be preparing aspirants for prelims mains and interview all the three stages it's quite affordable and the batch in september is starting from 11th so a week is left out freshly at 8 am the classes would be held and there is a there is a schedule which has been prepared and we follow we'll be following that schedule all right right again let me end our discussion with all the very best to you best of luck for the examination come out with flying colors thank you very much for watching this video jai hind